guys, this is Lala Legacy and welcome back to another episode of the second reproduction. So let's jump right back in. He laughed, mocking us. We were the fastest knights in the kingdom, with confidence to match, but we couldn't lay a scratch on him. It was outright humiliating. I gritted my teeth and went through every attack I knew in my mind, but none of them would ever work. That brief scuffle was more than enough evidence of Gardas's uh, insane power. If I was going to defeat him, I would have to give up on getting out of here in one piece, especially if I gave him the time for incantations. We'd be reduced to ashes in seconds. Thus, I glanced at Lizette behind me and prepared myself. Princess? Sorry, Lizette. I guess I can't keep my promise after all. Ha! Huh? I threw away my tactics and gambled everything on my speed. I dashed uh, forwards, sword outstretched, heading straight for the demon lord's chest. I was going to kill him even if it killed me in the process. <laughs> Turn to ashes. <laughs> Princess! Uh, how? Huh. So you're still alive after all that. How interesting. Maybe you're resistant to magic. I couldn't understand. What had just happened? I thought over... Or I thought... I thought over through Gardas' words, desperately tr looking for clues. But all I could... Or all I had to go on was the... Uh, the agonizing pain pulsing through my body, the pain from the impact. That's right, something hit me. Before I got a chance to touch him, an invisible force had thrown me backwards and slammed my body against the wall. I forced myself to stand up, my joints screaming in agony and my head desperately attempting to join the dots. <laughs> never, seen a mag or never seen magic activate without an incantation before. High-level demons such as myself draw out the circles and chant the lines in our minds instead. Did you really think you'd be safe if you never gave me the chance to speak? How foolish. No incantations? How dare you! With the demon lords back to him, Lizette uh, grabbed his chance and rushed forwards. But inches before the tip of his blade brushed against Gardas, the demon lord evaded and countered with a heavy blow. K you monster. Huh. If by monster you mean a hideous, pitiful creature, then surely you're referring to yourself. Princess, run away. Leave him to me. You can, or you can avenge me when you get stronger. He cried out as he parried Gardas' sword, his back to me. Don't be ridiculous! There's no way I can leave you! My knight, my best friend, and just run away! Lizette paused. I couldn't see his expression, but Gardas could, and an unpleasant smirk floated onto the demon's lips. So, it's unrequited. Shut up! Unnerved, Lizette's skills rapidly deteriorated. Oh no! Gardas' words had shaken him, and his rage rendered his own uh, attacks chaotic. I tried to call out to him, but it was too late. Gardas quickly uh, slipped beside him and uh, sorry guys, and smashed the hilt of his sword and onto Lizette's handguard. G there wasn't any blood, but his bones were undoubtedly bruised. Unable to withstand the pain, Lizette let his sword fall to the floor with a clatter. Gardas didn't miss his chance and punched Lizette hard in the stomach. His cape-covered bag bent horribly. <laughs> Did you really think you could defeat me like that? You underestimated me. <laughs> Ignoring his agony, Lizette struggled to, er, yeah, to his feet and tried to straighten his posture. Gardas, however, had other ideas, and grabbed the knight by the throat, lifting him onto his tiptoes. It was nothing short of a nightmare. 
With just one hand, Gardas had lifted up a fully grown man with the utmost ease. His smile felt ruthless and cruel, yet captivatingly beautiful. He could have snapped Lizette's neck in two that instant, but instead he chose to squeeze, taking sadistic pleasure in the knight's agonized expression. As he squeezed harder and harder, his sharp claws caught on Liz or Lizette's fragile skin and sent a rich crimson drop trickling down his neck. Lizette! Say, if I offer to save your life in exchange for hers, do you think the princess would agree to it? Just kill me! I'd rather die than be a burden on her! <laughs> How noble. A knight who would sacrifice himself for his princess, eh? This really is getting interesting. How much will you get in return, I wonder? I'm dying to know. You scum! <laughs> what a gratifying thing to say. You've certainly lived up to my expectations, both of you. You've entertained me plenty. So, I think I'll reward you. What are you... Why don't we make a contract, O oh brave knight of the princess? Uh, 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 no, stop! <gasps> what? What? <laughs> this is... It's a magical device. If either you or the princess dare to leave my kingdom, then you, her beloved knight, will disappear. Oh boy. Disappear? Why are you... I changed my mind. It might be fun keeping it... Keeping a champion's knight as a pet. Stop joking around! Remove it right now! Gardas gave a satisfied smile, amused by my fury. Yes, your highness, right this instant. Idiot, as if I do that. However, because I'm a nice person, I'll let you stay in my castle in the meantime. As long as you don't try to escape, of course. What? While you're here, feel free to try to assassinate me as many times as you want. I'll never get bored. It's like killing two birds with one stone, right? A wonderful idea. Tch, idiot! Don't underestimate me! Sparing me now means I'll get to kill you later! Not to mention, if I just abandoned my knight and escape, I could leak everything I know about your kingdom. My, my. Aren't you a kind little Miss Champion for going out of your way to warn me? Oh well. You can run away if you want, but the moment you leave, your dear friend will go poof. Ugh. <laughs> you put on a splendid show tonight. Keep up the good work. Wait! Are you trying to run away? <laughs> I had my share of children's games. If you want to play in my bed too, you'll need to grow up a bit. What? Leaving that utterly shameless line, Gardas strolled out the door and disappeared into the corridor. We were finally alone and neither I nor Lizette could move a muscle. I was dumbfounded by the fact that Gardas completely outstripped me in terms of combat and regret swirled in my heart over what happened to Lizette. I clenched my fist and punched the floor, cracks shooting across the dry surface. My deepest apologies, your highness. I am your knight, yet I've become nothing but a burden. I was struck by the... Or I was stuck by the change in his voice. For him... The shame was worse than death. Seeing him blame himself like that made my chest ache. That's right! As his princess, I need to pull myself together! Princess, please, allow me to redeem myself through death. Don't be an idiot! Why would I want you to do that? But... It's not your fault. Not only did I, as a champion, fail to defeat the Demon Lord, I couldn't even protect my subordinate. I'm the one you should blame. No, you're wrong. This is my- or it's my- I stopped Lizette's agitated reply by raising my hand. 
and slowly pulled myself up against the wall. The crescent moon smirked at us from the window, reminding me of that man's horrid smile. Staring at the moon, I rubbed, my, or I rubbed the blood off my lips and said, We haven't finished yet. Lizette, do you still remember your prom or our promise? Eh? I vowed to not let you die, remember? No matter what happens, I'm going to save you. Princess. He's underestimating us. He'll let his guard down eventually, and we'll use that as or we'll use that chance to get him. We'll defeat that man and go home again, together. I smiled at him, showing my resolution. It was hard to keep myself standing, my legs wobbly and my arms shaking. In the pale blue moonlight, a flash of bitterness flew across Lizette's face for a moment, but his expression quickly relaxed and turned into a gleeful smile. For a moment, I mistook his expression for sorrow, but it was probably just a trick of the demon's moonlight. Yes, princess. And just like that, Lizette and I stepped into a war, a war without any reinforcements and filled with utter despair. Okay, so I cut out that intro because, you know, music, <laughs> but I will be cutting that out and putting it up on my Twitter and possibly on my Facebook. So if you guys are interested in seeing the intros of this game, like the intro song and whatnot, you can go watch it over there. So here we go. Why? Why? Isn't it a matter of course? Oh god! There's no such thing as god. Somebody! Won't somebody save me, please? There's nothing here but death. Princess! Princess! Uh, a dream? Are you alright, princess? You looked like you were having a bad dream. Y yeah a really odd dream. It's probably because I'm still nervous. I'm not surprised. This isn't the most comforting uh, place to rest after all. Lizette forced a smile as he spoke, though the light streaming in from the window made it hard to see. It had to be around mid-afternoon, judging from the sun's position in the sky. The room was already beautifully furnished, and the natural light added to its glamour. I couldn't believe I'd slept so well in enemy territory. I was bolder than I thought. Sorry, I was only taking a quick rest. I didn't think I'd fall asleep. It's fine. We haven't had many opportunities to sleep on proper beds recently, so you should sleep while you can. But what about- I'm fine. Don't worry about me. But you were badly injured last night. How can I not worry about you? That's why I told you to sleep along alongside me. I can't do something that curt. What? Didn't we sleep side by side on the way here? What's the problem? It's different on a bed. Enemy territory is enemy territory, regardless of whether we're sleeping on dirt or in sheets. Anyway, why are you holding back? We're close enough friends, aren't we? This isn't about me holding back. Then what is it? Tell me already. I'll be honest then. Princess, I'm a man. Well, yeah, you don't look like a girl to me. That's not what I meant. Oh, so you're holding back because I'm a girl? In that case, don't worry about it. I don't mind. I, I see. So you don't mind after all. <laughs> Are you feeling all right? Do you still feel tired? I guess I do feel a bit tired. All of a sudden. Well, you'll have to wait until tonight. Right now, we've got to think of a way to defeat you-know-who. You're right. He hasn't come after us since the fight. He even gave us a room of our own. He's got to be planning something, but what? I have absolutely no idea. Is he... Uh... Is he a... H hedonist? Hedonist? I don't know what that word is. I don't even know what that means. I should look that up afterwards. A complete idiot? Terrifyingly clever? Whatever it is, we mustn't let our guard down. What in the world is he planning? 
After our failed attempt on his life, Gardas offered to, uh, to let us stay in his castle. We decided that listening to his advice was a bad idea, though. Not to mention, we'd be staying right in the heart of our enemy's headquarters. After waiting for the stiffness in my legs to fade, Lizette and I decided to head over to the throne room. But right at that moment... Good morning! Huh? A fe or female half-demon gave us a hearty welcome as she strolled into the room, a gleeful smile on her face. Apparently, she's a servant here in the castle. She had long maroon hair with matching eyes. Wrapped around her curvy body was a simple pale red dress. Her snowy white skin left an elegant impression on us. You? We'd actually met before. She escorted us to our room after Gardas left. She was just as lively last night as she was now. She didn't even get a chance to refuse back then. She just pushed us into the room. Are you trying to trick us? We won't let our guard down, you know. Huh? That's what you're trying to do, right? There's no way you demons would ever be this kind of a champion. I did it because I like you. I like you both a lot. Why? <laughs> well, you kept your promise back then and didn't kill me. So I found myself thinking, Wow, so this is what you call a champion. Back then? Oh dear, you don't remember me? I'm the woman who gave you the directions to Lord Gardas's room. Gave us directions? Ah, you're the woman we tied up? That's right. <laughs> I loved the way you guys tied me up. Oh God. <laughs> well, Lizette's the one who tied her up. Then, what are you here for? Oh, that's right. I came to call you. Lord Gardas has invited you both to the throne room. He did? So, he finally made his move, huh? What for? I don't know. That's all he said. Princess. So after sleeping on it, he decided to end this farce after all. Maybe he's planning on torturing us to death in front of a big crowd. I don't know, but searching all over the castle for him takes too much time and energy, so we might as well go along with it for now. I nodded to a nervous Lizette and returned my gaze back to the woman. Then, please, show us the way, miss... Er... Oh, I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Kiria. I hope we can get along from now on, okay? E yeah! Kiria's over-familiarity uh, over unnerved me, but we kept following her regardless. Did you sleep well last night? Just fine. Then that's great. I'm giving them the same voice and I don't like it. I don't know what voice to give her. I don't know what she looks like. It didn't sound like she was making fun of us. Maybe she really was genuinely pleased about it. I never thought there'd be a day when a demon would worry about me. If she knew our true intentions, what would she say? Would she still escort us to Gardas? I thought about it as we walked. Do you feel any calmer? Huh? You don't need to take me hostage. As you can see, there's no one else in the castle. Uh... Her words shot through me like an arrow. I couldn't help but gulp. Trying to disguise my nerves, I kept my voice steady and asked, There aren't many servants in, this, er, in the castle, are there? That's right. Lord Gardas keeps as few servants by his side as he can. So that's why there's barely anyone here. That had to be why the place felt so creepy last night. But isn't it a little... irresponsible? Well, Lord Gardas is very strong after all. Someone ought to tell him what overconfidence usually leads to. He's not overconfident, he just keeps his own abilities in mind. His majesty even orders us to guide whoever invades the castle straight to him. Wh what Well, like I said, his majesty himself orders it. Why would he? In this day and age, the world of light isn't a safe place for us demons to live in. Lots of people in the castle means lots of common er, lots of cannon fodder for the champions to hack through. Imagine how last night would have gone if the castle was full. 
The more we resist, the more blood gets shed. So he's doing all that for the sake of his servants? To us demons, his majesty is a kind and noble king. But that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. By subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!